In this video, I'll show you how to use Euler's method to predict the spread of disease for the SIR model. Let's imagine that there is a new disease going around called the one-legged R syndrome. It has several symptoms that result in the infected person either recovering or setting sail in search of buried treasure. What's important to know for our purposes is that the infection runs its course in three days and, based on data collected by the CDC, the transmission coefficient is equal to 0 0.0002. And let's say that, at this point in time, which we'll call day zero, there are 6,000 susceptible individuals, 10 infected individuals, and 5 individuals who have either recovered or sailed away. So let's build our SIR model. In these equations, A is the transmission coefficient, and K is the number of days the infection lasts so we can substitute the values we know for a and k. And for this model to work, we'll need to assume that one-third of the infected group moves to the removed group each day. Now, let's start organizing our information. We'll make a table to record our information. So we have columns to record the number of days since we started recording information, the number of susceptible, infected, and removed individuals, and the rate at which the susceptible group, the infected group, and the removed groups are changing, in people per day. And for now, we'll compute values for 0, 1, and 2 days since we started recording information. And we already have some information. We know that there are currently 6,000 susceptible individuals, 10 infected individuals, and 5 recovered individuals. And let's put our important relationships here. First, the amount of change in S can be approximated by multiplying the rate of change of s by the amount of change in time. And we could use i or r in this equation too. Second, if we want to know the number of susceptible individuals at a particular hour, we can add the change in s to the number of susceptible individuals from the previous hour. So let's start filling out the table. We'll first compute the value of s prime of t using the differential equation. We'll multiply negative 0.0002 by the value of s and the value of i to get that s prime of 0 is negative 12 people per day. So in this situation, the number of susceptible individuals is changing at a rate of negative 12 people per day for an entire day. So we should be losing 12 susceptible individuals. Let's think about this in terms of the formula. Since we're Going from 0 to 1 day, the amount of change in time is 1 day. The rate at t equals 0 is negative 12 people per day. So the amount of change in the number of susceptible individuals is approximately negative 12. And we should keep in mind that this is approximate because we're assuming that the rate, s prime, is constant for the entire day. Then, we can use this amount of change in the susceptible group, along with the number of susceptible individuals at t equals 0 hours, to get that there are 5,988 susceptible individuals at t equals 1 hour. Next, let's look at the values for r and r prime. We'll compute r prime of t using the differential equation. We'll divide the value of i by 3 to get 3.33 people per day for r prime. We're going from 0 to 1 day, so the delta t is 1 day. The rate at t equals 0 is 3.33 people per day, so delta r is approximately 3.33. And this is approximate because we're assuming that the rate, r prime, is constant for the entire day. Then we can use delta r along with the r of 0 to get that there are 8.33 removed individuals at t equals 1 hour. Now, we could repeat this process to compute the number of infected individuals at 1 hour, but there's a slightly easier way to do this. We're assuming that this is a closed system, that there aren't any people coming into or leaving the population. So if you look at the total change in the three groups, it has to add up to zero. Now, if we look at the change in the number of susceptible individuals, we can see that there are 12 fewer at t equals 1 than there were at t equals 0. And if we look at the removed individuals, there are 3.33 more. 
If we combine these, we see that there needs to be an additional 8.67 infected people at t equals 1 than there were at t equals 0, which means there must be 18.67 infected individuals at t equals 1. And now we can repeat this whole process to compute the number of people in each group at t equals 2 hours. We'll compute s prime of 1 using the differential equation. We'll multiply s of 1 by i of 1 by negative 0 0.0002 to get negative 22.36 people per day for s prime. We're going from 1 to 2 days, so the delta t is 1 day. The rate at t equals 1 is negative 22.36 people per day, so delta s is approximately negative 22.36 people. And this is approximate because we're assuming that the rate, s prime, is constant for the entire day. Then we can use delta s along with the value of s of 1 to get that there are 5,965.64 susceptible individuals at t equals 2 hours. Now let's compute r of 2. We'll compute r prime of t using the differential equation. We'll divide the value of i by 3 to get 6.22 people per day for r prime. We're going from 1 to 2 days, so delta t is 1 day. The rate at t equals 1 is 6.22 people per day, so delta r is approximately 6.22 people. And this is approximate because we're assuming that the rate, r prime, is constant for the entire day. Then we can use delta r along with the r of 1 to get that there are 14.55 removed individuals at t equals 2 hours. And let's compute the number of infected individuals at t equals 2. Recall that the total change in the three groups has to equal 0. Now, if we look at the change in the number of susceptible individuals, we can see that there are 22.36 fewer at t equals 2 than there were at t equals 1. And if we look at the removed individuals, there are 6.22 more. If we combine these, we see that there needs to be an additional 16.14 infected people at t equals 2 than there were at t equals 1, which means that there are 34.81 infected individuals at t equals 2. So now we've seen how to use Euler's method to compute the number of individuals in each group for the SIR model.